the shortcomings of the DSLR cameras and how does the digital Bolex overcome those deficiencies? Um, first, before we talk about deficiencies, I'd like to talk to say that we're very thankful for the DSLR revolution because without um, the Canon 5D Mark II and the cameras that came after that, there's no way we would be here. Um, the the uh, market that they created is what we have a growth potential in, and, um, and we very much hope to live up to uh, being part of that legacy as opposed to, opposed to it. Um, as far as limitations though, uh, DSLRs come from a hundred year history of still photography and ergonomics for still photography um, and are completely different from the ergonomics that uh, you look at for the hundred years of history for cinematography and for a motion picture. And uh, that alone means that in order to shoot with these cameras, you generally have a lot of um, hurdles and accessories and other things that you have to do to make it work. Um, and the other issue is, the, for me, uh, of course there's the compression issues, but the other issue for me is the way that they use the sensor. Um, for still photography, having a larger sensor um, and higher megapixels is uh, usually better, but um, for making 1920 by 1080 video or something close to that, having more megapixels often is a, more of a hindrance than it is a help. Um, the math that you have to do to get from a 36 megapixel image down to a, a 1920 by 1080 image is uh, should be really difficult math, but because they have to do it in camera on a processor the size of a watch battery, they take a lot of shortcuts to that math, and it ends up with uh, an image that isn't ideal, in my opinion. Uh, the Bolex uses a one-to-one -one pixel ratio, so you're, you're using one pixel for one pixel for every placement, and uh, because of that world, we're able to take all of the data, all of the pixel data that comes in, in 12-bit, uh, which is a much longer math formula than 8-bit, and store all of it, as opposed to storing a very small fraction of a much larger sensor. Yeah, I mean, I think what was great about the DSLRs that everybody you know jumped on board with was the fact that you had interchangeable lenses, that you could finally get this sort of filmic depth of field and that's something that filmmakers um, who are working in video have been trying to get for many many years you know people were building and buying these expensive 35 millimeter adapters just so they could use a more a wider variety of lenses and suddenly the DSLRs appeared and that made everything totally changed it allowed you to create much better looking images on a lower budget but at the same time the video addition to the DSLRs was never meant to be their primary function. It was just a an add-on that was put in there to make the cameras more competitive. And while it's great, it was never designed to do pro video in the way that people have used it to do pro video. You know, one thing that um, lower budget filmmakers, you know, are known for is trying to push the tools as much as they can to do what they feel they need to do. And so you have a whole group of people now that are trying to make DSLRs do a little bit more than they're built to do. And there's a reason why they've developed, you know, the, the cameras, that, the companies that make DSLRs, there's a reason why they have made higher end cameras as well because they're, they know that there are some things that would be very difficult for them to do on the DSLRs on the lower end of the price range. And I think that um, the digital Bolex, you know, there, there are a number of advantages, the ergonomics being one of them, the lack of rolling shutter, you know, a, a sensor that's designed for doing video um, primarily. Um, it's a little bit more expensive of a sensor, which is, you know, one of the reasons that it can do these things. Um, but, you know, we also have audio on there that is professional audio at a very high uh, uh, kilohertz and uh, uh, bit rate and that allows people to get something you know they don't have to have uh, 
some whole big recording system to be able to get good audio. So one unfortunate deficiency is people again trying to use a DSLR to do more pro video. Well, this is not an audio tool. Um, you have to have um, external recorders when you shoot with a DSLR if you're trying to shoot professionally. We're trying to create something that's a more all-in-one package so that people don't have to trick out their kit with different accessories to be able to do fairly simple functions.